Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here and today we are going to look at the science behind super responders and in essence this has much to do between the relationship between testosterone and androgen receptors in a given individual. In looking at testosterone and its derivatives and its interaction with androgen receptors, we will then relate this to super responders on a cycle and what we as natural lifters can take away from all this information. Having recently interviewed Danny Padilla and other golden era bodybuilders and delved into the effects of anabolic substances on muscle growth, it is increasingly apparent that there are varying responses due to several factors, with one of the main factors being of course genetics. Danny claimed for example that he and Arnold would blow up on minimal dianabol and called this effect being a super responder. But just what is a super responder? Well, it obviously has to do something with the ability of one to respond to an anabolic substance. And science has recently shown that being a super responder may indicate that the effect you have to an anabolic substance, whether it is synthetic or naturally produced in your body, has to do with your genetics, in that you respond more favorably when compared to other people. It is no wonder that we hear that often even nowadays that for some people it doesn't matter how much product they take, they will never look as good as someone that has the genetics for the sport, that is by other terms they are super responders. The super responders are able to take minimal product and respond incredibly well to anabolics and most likely already showed incredible natural potential even before being on any anabolic substances at all. As most people would say, they were born for bodybuilding and they had the genetics in the first place. After doing some research, it has become obvious to me that super responders must have the genetic advantage of having more androgen receptors expressed on their cells than the average male, and this therefore explains why they respond so much more favorably than their best friend who is also on a cycle with them. This brings me to the topic of the relationship between testosterone and androgen receptors and the recent science that is beginning to clear up certain misconceptions regarding hormones and our responses to them after exercise. For many of us naturals that do not want to risk or resort to using anabolics, we may try things like test boosters. And sure, there are hundreds of products nowadays, even thousands, offering steroid-like results by using their herbal concoctions. Of course, from what I've experienced uh, thus far, it all sounds too good to be true, and it most likely is. The fact is, testosterone levels vary naturally from person to person, and it is a common conception that if your testosterone levels are hovering around the higher end of the normal range, you should have an easier time in gaining muscle than someone with naturally lower testosterone levels. However, when it comes to spiking one's testosterone naturally during exercise or by test boosters, this temporary increase may not be sufficient to have any long-term effect on muscle hypertrophy, as the latest research on testosterone and muscle growth shows that the connection between testosterone and muscle hypertrophy is a lot murkier and complicated than was once believed. For example, although testosterone is increased during and directly after exercise, it is arguable whether in any temporary surge in post-training testosterone levels increase the amount of muscle you gain over time. In one study, researchers analyzed data collected from 56 men who took part in a 12-week resistance training program. If the post-exercise change in testosterone levels was important as far as building muscle is concerned, you'd expect to see two different things. Guys with the largest testosterone response to training would build the most muscle, and those with the smallest response would build the least muscle. But when these scientists looked at the data, the researchers could find no significant link between the exercise-induced rise in testosterone levels and gains in muscle mass. You know, when you look further down into the results, the subjects in the study were divided into responders, men who built the most muscle, and non-responders, those who built the least muscle. The hormonal responses of those who made the fastest gains in size and strength were no different than those who made the slowest gains. More interesting still is that the amount of testosterone you have at rest 
in healthy young men at least doesn't appear to have much to do with muscle growth either. In fact, the latest science shows that guys who built the most muscle after 12 weeks of weight training weren't the ones with the highest testosterone levels, but the ones with more androgen receptors. Why do androgen receptors matter so much? For testosterone to do all the things we know and love as far as muscle growth is concerned, it needs to interact with muscle tissue, and this is why it's so important. And it does that via androgen receptors. One of the ways androgen receptors respond to a hormone like testosterone is by signaling muscle cells to increase the rate at which new muscle protein is laid down. Over time, this increase in muscle protein synthesis leads to bigger, stronger muscles. Now looking back at the study, the guys who built the most muscle didn't have higher testosterone levels, but they did have more androgen receptors in their muscles than the subjects who gained the least muscle. This meant their bodies were able to make better use of the testosterone that was available. This fact brings us back to the point I was making about super responders. Science is now suggesting that it isn't necessarily just your testosterone levels that predict muscle gains, but how sensitive your muscles are to that testosterone. That is, the more androgen receptors you have, the better chance you have of gaining muscle. Of course, having said that, if we are going to talk about androgen receptors, then we need to assume that at least you should have normal testosterone levels being produced and circulating in your system in the first place. In many ways, then, if you are on a cycle and increasing your testosterone levels to supra-physiological levels, the amount of androgen receptors you have will therefore determine how sensitive you are to the cycle you are taking. The greater amount of androgen receptors you have, the greater the response, and therefore this addresses the conundrum behind a super responder. It appears then that a super responder is most likely genetically blessed with high levels of expression of androgen receptors on their muscle cells. At least, this is one major factor in their arsenal that puts them above the average lifter. Now, I am not stating that those with less androgen receptors on cycles will not gain. Most people on cycles will most likely gain and gain well, as anabolic drugs work because they take your testosterone levels out of their normal physiological range. They actually take them to what is called supra-physiological range, which basically means it is way above normal. And these cycles basically keep them there day and night, for weeks and months, and sometimes even years on end, which again is very different to a natural lifter, whose testosterone levels only peak during sleep and fluctuate daily, of course, depending as well on, on their exercise routines as well. This persistent high level of testosterone levels or its derivatives is why the supraphysiological doses administered during cycles have such dramatic effects on muscle growth in unnatural and enhanced bodybuilders. Cementing this fact, a team of Californian scientists found that guys who combined three days a week of weight training with weekly testosterone injections gained a whopping 13 pounds of muscle in just 10 weeks. The amount of testosterone they were given, 600 milligrams per week, is a lot, around six times higher than the dose usually given to men on hormone replacement therapy. It was enough to raise their testosterone levels by more than 600%. Now that is what I call supra-physiological. In other words, the injections took testosterone levels well outside of their normal range, well outside of their normal physiological range, which is why they had such a big impact on muscle growth. Well, now what as we naturals, I hear you ask, can we learn about the response of a super responder with superior genetics that allow them to have a greater number of androgen receptor on their cells, and more so those super responders that are on cycles? Well, at best, it allows us to reflect on the reality of being a natural lifter. Accept who you are, is what I say, and work slowly towards your goals, and be content with what genetics you have been dealt with. Speaking of genetics, can we increase our testosterone production further? Maybe, but we definitely can't change the expression of our androgen receptors. That is genetically determined. 
In regards to test boosters, you know, the truth is, even if we could find a natural testosterone supplement and it could raise your testosterone levels by 10, 20 or 30%, which many do, or even 100%, it's a drop in the bucket when compared to what you're getting from drugs on a cycle. So in essence, I think that most test boosters are a waste of money. I've tried many and they don't do much at all. As we have seen in the bodybuilding world, only a gargantuan spike in testosterone will actually alter muscle growth significantly. Of course, as a natural bodybuilder, this can sound like depressing news. If your testosterone levels are well below normal, especially as you age, like myself, I'm in, almost in my mid 40s now, you'll find that gaining muscle is a very slow process. When levels are several hundred percent higher than normal, your muscles are going to grow a lot more quickly. It makes sense. Fluctuations in testosterone within the normal physiological range, however, aren't going to do much of anything and trying to raise your testosterone levels naturally is unlikely to have much of an impact on the speed at which you gain muscle. So again, I would personally ditch the test boosters because they won't do much to increase your muscle size. Uh, you know, if anything, as a natural, I say this to you, take heart and be content with being a natural and don't compare yourself with those on the juice. I know it's hard. They are all over social media, but I say, see those physiques as motivation at best, but don't pretend to ever think you will get a physique like that and understand that those physiques are not natural and they are also not permanent. They are only temporary. Stay healthy instead, focus on slowly progressing and accepting your genetics and working toward your greatest potential slowly, day by day and year by year. In the long run, you will lead a happy, strong and healthy life, which is what bodybuilding and physical culture originally were all about. Now, for those approaching middle age like myself, it is important to accept the fact that our test levels will drop and eventually we will need to make that decision to take testosterone replacement therapy or not. And I do think that it is a personal choice and everybody has a right to their own decisions. Test injections and anabolics obviously do work, but your response to those are determined by your genetic propensity to express androgen receptors. Just remember that. And even if one decides to get on TRT, once again, the effects may be minimal to moderate and one can never achieve an Olympia physique even on TRT. On TRT, your levels may return to normal or even be as high as double that of normal, but they will never be at such a super physiological level that you would or could develop the physique of an Arnold Schwarzenegger or Dorian Yates. Forget about it. These men are most likely super responders with a plethora of genetic variables that are favorable for bodybuilding, which is why they created such timeless physiques. They are not just super responders, they were born for bodybuilding. So I do hope you have enjoyed this reflection and discussion on super responders, their likely genetic advantages, and how it is that testosterone and anabolic substances work in such individuals that are most likely blessed with high androgen receptor expression on their muscles amongst other genetic advantages. If you've enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and leave me your comments. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for 
uh, getting into competition. It's just the, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for all the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more. And select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegerona.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout.